I guess the first thing I want to do before I forget um, is to thank the universities of Birmingham and Nottingham for their incredible support um, to this initiative. And I know I speak on behalf of the investigators as well as the joint funders that without the phenomenal real cash, real additional support that's gone in, I don't think this centre could uh, achieve um, all the aspirations, the appropriate aspirations, it has set itself. So um, I'm delighted to be here on behalf of Arthritis Research UK. Um, and as a charity, we focus <coughs> traditionally on diseases that came under the heading of arthritis and musculoskeletal diseases. But for the people our charity exists for, the patients, the, the public, they're not necessarily concerned with disease definitions. They're concerned with the, their quality of life and the fact that their musculoskeletal health will endure to allow them to live the, their life to the full. When you begin to unpack what that means, you realise that, for example, the age-related decline in cartilage leading to osteoarthritis, the age-related decline in bone leading to osteoporosis, the age-related decline in, for example, the um, robustness of the inflammatory response leads to a whole range of potential other disorders. And I think what became apparent to many of us in the musculoskeletal field is the age-related decline in muscle, both muscle quality and muscle quantity, added to all the other aspects that we talked about, led to frailty, with one of the key clinical results of that being falls. And those of us with elderly parents, elderly in-laws, elderly relatives, and those at the clinical sharp end will be aware of the devastating effect of falls in the elderly, which often seems to be the tipping point for downward spiral of progressive ill health and social and other demands. So it seemed appropriate that this was a priority, but when we looked as a charity what really was going on in the field of musculoskeletal ageing, it was very, very disparate. We are aware of people who've taken individual components. We, as a charity, had supported research into cartilage loss, into bone loss. Others, both um, Medical Research Council, BBSRC, for example, had supported research um, into age-related muscle loss, both in humans and in animals. There was work going on in nutrition, work going on in exercise. There haven't been any consistent, cohesive approach to bring all these together. Almost exactly three years ago, um, Arthritis Research UK sponsored um, uh, a uh, meeting um, at that time with what I believe was research into ageing. Um, and we brought together groups of people, some of whom knew each other, some of whom didn't. And we set them the, the challenge of, rather than look within your own individual silos, what can be done together? And it was a fascinating interchange. Very, very interesting questions about how much exercise is good and how much mechanical loading on the joint is bad, for example. Um, so there are a number of issues where people realise we had to work together. So following that, a small group was set up and delighted that um, Anton um, uh, here today is one of the key um, investigators in this unit, was part of a kind of small uh, advisory group. And it was not rocket science to come up with a suggestion that what was needed was an infrastructure to bring these different components together with the end result, we weren't just working on a single tissue or a single input, but working um, on what we, what we could do to enhance the, the lives of adults. Um, and we then um, emerged with the concept of developing um, a centre. Um, I, then there was a, a process 
um, it was a protracted process, but it was a um, supportive process um, of negotiations with um, the Medical Research Council, who they themselves, and Paul will probably want to talk about it, so I won't steal the other one, um, had been very keen to support um, a, a program um, in ageing. And we, uh, the charity said, well, we, we have this process within the UK of a competitive um, application for a centre in a single area. And the MRC, um, to their credit, bought into this, and we launched um, a joint bid. Now, Caroline, I'm going to forget, but I think it's 11 applications. Mm -hmm. So there were 11 applications from consortia of universities around the country. It really did, this that whole initiative really kind of set alight the kind of excitement that we as funders wanted to generate and brought together for the purpose of these bids the collaboration and the opportunities um, that otherwise might not have existed. Um, together with um, our um, international advisory panel we had a very difficult job because we were faced with some phenomenally exciting science that came together. Um, however, when push came to shove, um, we uh, made the decision in the end to whittle down um, those bids to two um, su successful bids, one of whom which is represented today um, from um, Birmingham and Nottingham. Um, and I will say, um, with knowing that I'm going to embarrass Janet completely, um, having become a veteran of presentations and site visits of this kind, I know that I speak on behalf of our panel that we saw an exemplary display of scientific leadership um, related to Janet's presentation of her vision for the centre and how all the very disparate and diverse components would work together. Um, so, in the end, the decision to make an award to these great institutions, to this phenomenal leader, um, was actually not a difficult one and it was one that we made with great pleasure. So it's with a tremendous level of excitement that I know Arthritis Research UK sees the launch of the centre from this meeting three years ago um, and today to have this initial opportunity to have people to get together and really start the business of undertaking the work. Um, Caroline and I, like myself, um, from the charity um, had um, our inaugural visit a couple of months ago and we were really very excited by not only the plans but also the dynamism of how they were going to be executed and also the enthusiasm not only for delivering but for constantly being aware of what's going on because fossilisation in these kind of enterprises never works. We have to be aware of what's going on elsewhere and to move with the times as well as delivering on the programme. So we're very optimistic on your success. We congratulate you and look forward to taking part in future meetings like this um, and hearing about your future successes. So thank you very much.